My name is Arius, and this is the complete starter guide for Elder Scrolls Blades. What is Elder Scrolls Blades? It's basically mobile Skyrim, except the focus is not on open world exploration. It's on building up your town and adventuring into the realm to level up, gear up, and develop your character. Being that it's mobile, adjust your expectations as such and you will have a good time. Beginning the game and understanding the controls. Customization is easy with a character builder. Be who you want and play how you want. But knowing this important tip here at this stage will 100% help you in the long run. And that's simply planning your build. Some people do and some people don't. I didn't plan my build. I just played and used what gear I found and made builds from that. But if you're a planner and you want to be a two-hander that resists frosts, then you'll want to play a Nord. Want to be a poison-spitting mage? Consider Khajiit or Dark Elf. Be sure to look at the bonuses and understand what will be valuable to you in the long run. Made a mistake and want to change it? Don't worry. Visit Lord Sheogorath in town and for a small jam fee, he'll allow you to recustomize your character. You'll find him disguised as a gentleman named Theodore Gorlash. Very sneaky indeed. Just be sure that your name isn't too long. Otherwise, you'll have to do a name change to shorten it up. If you don't know how to change your name, watch the other video in the upper right corner. If you're still wondering about controls, they're pretty easy. You can go into the menu and change them if you wish. What about skills for starting the game? The best skills off the bat to get are Absorb and Adrenaline Dodge, simply because they restore health and keep you alive, but you can't kill anything with just those skills. So after that, go for the Strike skills. They are very valuable because they allow you to swing twice, hitting your opponent twice and activating your weapon or shield enchants twice. If you're playing a two-hander, you don't need the shield skills, but personally, it's much better to play with a shield because you have more ways to attack and defend. Any shield skill will start with a high block, so if your opponent is attacking, while you activate your shield skill, you get a free high block, as well as stunning your opponent. How to get loot? Make sure to break all the shinies, touch all the things. It's pretty easy. The bigger the shiny, the more loot that pops out. Also know that once you get loot in a stage, and it's a quest you can start over, you will not be able to pick up that same loot again. Even if you got loot from a mob, that mob would respawn, but it wouldn't drop the loot anymore. Treasure chests. There are treasure chests that appear in this quality order. Wooden, silver, gold, elder, legendary. Most people save elder and legendary chests until they reach level 45, the minimum level to wear max level gear, or level 50, where you get your max level of skill points. It's up to you. Sometimes you can pull really rare low-level legendary weapons by opening legendary chests at low levels, but they're not useful in the long run. They're just cool to show off. If you want to save your chests, be sure to go into the menu and turn off the option to auto-open chests. If you do though, keep in mind that you can only save up to 100 chests and they will auto-open at that point inventory and loadouts. This is very important. You'll want to be able to carry a lot of inventory because you'll need different gear for different scenarios. That's why we have five loadouts. In a loadout, you can pre-build your character with gear and skills. This is helpful if you're going from two-hander to versatile to mage, etc. Or if you need frost resist for one monster and then flame resist for another. It allows you to quickly switch between your different sets. Experience and leveling up. It's pretty easy. Just kill mobs, do quests, get experience, and level up. Early on, the best experience comes from doing the main storyline first. Go as far as you can with the gear that you have. If you hit a quest you can't complete because of difficulty, switch to doing daily event quests. Try to complete at least the easier ones because sigils will be the most important currency at end game levels. If you've done all the event quests, you can go to the Abyss. The further you advance, the higher the multiplier and the more gold, materials and experience you get. 
In my opinion, if you can hit the times six multiplier in the abyss for a few levels, this is the best way to grind. But if that's still too hard, go to jobs. It shows you a skull level difficulty. Just remember, the skull difficulty rating will go up if you have bad gear. If you have better gear, the skulls will go down, showing that the job should be easier because of the gear. If all the skulls are too high or too difficult, then grab the highest, most difficult job, enter it, then quit to town. It'll reset the job board and give you something less difficult. If you are at least level 10, jump into arena, face against other players, and earn gold for winning or losing. This can be frustrating as other players who have better gear and higher levels will crush you, but it's nice and it breaks up the monotony of leveling. The best PvP experience comes after you have more skills to use and better gear. I recommend level 20. In any case, foolproof way to level. BAM! Skill points, health, magicka, and stamina. When leveling up, you'll be able to gain stamina and magicka respectively. It's entirely up to you. If you don't like what your build has done, you can always reset it using gems. My choices tend to vary as equipment, primary, and chance can boost your magic or stamina as well as health. But I go to a one-to-one -one ratio until I know for sure what I'm trying to build. For skill points, don't invest too much into increasing the levels of your skills. Even at endgame, many players leave their skills at level one, unless you're a mage. For low level, this is important because too high level means too high a cost and you won't be able to use your skills. In this game, it's quantity over quality. The more skills you can use, the more chances you have in a fight. I say this because doing damage also allows you to restore health, magic, and stamina depending on what enchantments you have on your gloves, neck, and rings. So keep that in mind when building your character. For currency, you have three, gold gems, and sigils. Gold can be acquired easily by pretty much questing or doing the abyss. Sigils are only given by completing daily event quests. I would save these until you reach endgame level, as these are necessary for getting good gear. Gems come as drops from mobs, breakables, and chests. Wooden chests are the best for grinding gems. And gems are really good for buying packs that give you materials and such, but I recommend saving them for inventory and doing any kind of character resets. This is definitely the most bang for your buck when it comes to gems. Now, building the town. The main storyline focuses on rebuilding your town, so be sure to do this as you go. Check out my town leveling guide as this will help you build your town up to level 10 the fastest. But the most important is blacksmith and enchanter. Level up blacksmith first for weapons and gear, and enchanter to enchant the gear. In another one of my videos, I showcase a player named Jesus Loves You, who is level 14 and absolutely destroys players twice their level. This is possible because this player max leveled their enchanter early on at level 14 and is using high level weapon enchants to burn down the opponent quickly. So the faster you level your town, the faster you can level your enchanter. Finally, and until this day, I can honestly say that PvP is still the best feature of the game. Not only do you find the whole community there, but you'll learn so much more about yourself and your character. So if you haven't tried it yet, get in the arena and fight us. It's how the rebellion stays strong and is preparing to combat the incoming Ectolife AI army. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, be sure to do so. And also, fight the algorithm by up-thumbing or down-thumbing this video. If you think it's rad, up-thumb. If it's dumb, down-thumb. Pick a thumb, any thumb. It's what activates the algorithm, so let's beat it up. Oh, and before I forget, the most overpowered tip that I can give you is actually one that's already built into the game. Take a look at the help menu right here. If you don't know how to do something, this will tell you how. If this doesn't tell you, or if you don't understand, come find us in the Discord link below, and we'll help you out. My name is Arius. Stay rad, my friends. The rebellion lives on. 
Cheers.